Chapter 3.3 Kindness Isn't Weak by Sky. Sky, said Angel, we must get into the habit of pouring good wishes onto the followers of evil. It's not for us to punish them. Blizzard nodded. We don't want to be on the side of evil, he added, because we don't want our hearts to be filled with hatred. Frank looked angry. I don't want to wish the thieves well, he said. Look what they've done to Skye. Angel looked steadily at Frank. Don't ever confuse being kind with being weak, she said. As a wise person, you must look after your heart. Blizzard added, let your heart be as clear as the blue sky. Frank didn't look convinced. I still hate them, he said. I don't care what happens to them. Angel looked evenly at Frank. Hating people, even evil people, harms your body, not theirs. And it also harms your soul, she said. Frank sighed. I still feel like punching Isla. Angel stared at Frank. Just start by not wishing her harm, said Angel. Of course we want to stop her from hurting people. But don't let your anger harm your own heart. Blizzard added, As my dear friend Gandalf says, Don't be too quick to deal out death and judgment. Frank nodded and looked down. Angel said, You must learn to guard your soul, the part of you that you call yourself. Just because you wish someone well, doesn't mean that good things will happen to them. It just means that your heart will be free of the filth that comes from wishing them dead. Frank blushed. I'll try, he said. Try hard, said Angel. Your heart is far too precious a thing to have hate anywhere near it. Frank told me later that as Angel spoke, he was reminded of Isla's heart oozing dirty blood and sneering with its dreadful mouth. The thought of his own heart turning out like that was enough to cure him of wanting to hate anyone. Angel turned to me and said, Blizzard tells me you saw Gabriel today and he gave you the ability to shapeshift. I grinned. He did. Excellent. Did he give you any ideas about which animal to choose? He said to try a flying creature. Perfect, said Angel. Which one? I thought maybe a white sea eagle. Go on then, said Angel. I shut my eyes and thought about a huge sea eagle I'd seen when I was surfing with Dad. It had been so beautiful, a splash of white high up in the blue. When I opened my eyes, I was stretching out my massive wings and everyone had moved away from me. I opened my beak and squawked in a flurry of high-pitched chatter. Then I laughed and it sounded really weird. I'm not sure that eagles know how to laugh. I laughed again and it sounded even more ridiculous. You know how to speak, said Angel, inviting me to sit on her forearm. Just concentrate and the words will come, said Blizzard. I squeaked some more but quickly found my voice and said, This is fantastic! Angel smiled. Now use that eagle brain to think of a way to find Jemima. Okay, I said, loving the way my beak felt as I spoke. It was so different to a human mouth. We have our grandmother's book at home, said Ben. It's about how to put people together again, but it might cover how to find lost selves. I know the book said Angel. I too splintered during a very hard time in my childhood. I helped to write the book with Athena. You knew our grandmother? I asked. I still do, said Angel. I'm sorry to tell you, I said, but she's... In heaven, asked Angel. People from the islands of time are often invited to visit heaven. Don't you have to die to go to heaven? asked Ben. Not at all, said Angel. Then how? asked Ben. A topic for another day, said Blizzard firmly. Angel agreed. For now, let's focus on putting Sky back together again. 
I could see that Ben was bursting to ask questions about heaven, and so was I, but Angel and Blizzard had turned their attention to splintering. How many selves has, have split away from you? asked Angel. I thought for a moment. Jem and Six appeared while I was in hospital, in the coma after Dad died. Another self splintered when I was kidnapped by the Desgul, but she merged back with me and then when my wings were torn out, she split away again. She was about five years old and that time she merged with Six, not me. You were being attacked, said Angel. It would have been foolish to merge with you. Ben looked at Angel. When you splintered, said Ben, did yourselves get older each time you had a birthday? I've always wondered if splintered selves grow up, he said. Mine were only splintered for a short time, said Angel, but I've known people to have splintered selves for over two years, and yes, they did grow up alongside them. Ben nodded. I heard what Angel said, but I couldn't focus. My mind felt like it was expanding at a massive rate. Heaven, we could visit heaven. Even the thought made me almost burst. I wondered, could we visit mum and dad? As if he could read my thoughts, Blizzard said, Sky, please focus, it's important. I felt embarrassed as though I'd been caught daydreaming in class. Sorry, I said, I was just wondering... If you could visit your parents, asked Angel. We'll talk about it, I promise. Right now, we must focus on helping you. I nodded. Perhaps changing back into your human form will help you focus, said Angel. I closed my sea eagle eyes and concentrated. It felt strange to feel myself becoming large again. It was like I was in an elevator, but I wasn't going up or down. Instead, I was moving outwards in every direction. I opened my eyes, transformed. Excellent, said Angel. Ben gave me a hug. So proud of you, he whispered. I smiled. I know we have to find Jem, I said, but if we don't stop the time virus, won't it just wreck our family's life all over again? You're right, said Angel. The main aim of the time virus is to push each person's life off course in any way it can. So wrong, said Ben. Blizzard nodded. No one is meant to have a harsh life, he said. Nagal looked up from his book. I might be, he said with a gravelly laugh. Chapter 3.33 Moving Through Time and Space by Sky Angel smiled at Nagal. Of course you're not meant to lead a harsh life, she said. Evil focuses on ruining lives that are going to cause harm to evil itself. We all frowned. Whenever the time virus finds an opportunity, it somehow breaks the link between the time game and a family's destiny, said Blizzard. Once that link is broken, the time virus starts to cause havoc, ruining generation after generation. How come the time virus was in Minnow and Frank's computer game? asked Ben. It appears that Frank and Minnow are deeply prophetic, said Angel. They built a game that connected with what was really going on in the world. They just didn't realise. Prophetic, asked Frank. Able to see things that aren't visible, to sense them, said Angel. Actually, all of you suspected that the, the Overlord and Isla were evil, said Blizzard. You certainly knew that something was wrong. We did, said Frank. Ben added, we really did. As everyone was talking, I remembered something. Isla said that I grow up to cause her harm. How could she know that? Time is a strange thing, said Angel. You're only seeing yourself here, now. But imagine if you had already grown up and you'd become a wonderful, strong person. I thought about it. Okay, I said. Then could you accept, asked Angel, that you might also be here with us, still growing up, while you're in that other part of time and space where you've already grown up? Sort of, I said. Would I be a younger, splintered part of an older me? 
Perhaps, said Angel, or maybe time and space are not how our scientists have always thought they are. Maybe time is more like magic. We can have both here and there and somewhere else all at the same time. I frowned. I think I get it. Blizzard smiled. It's hard, he said. But if Violet is in some other time and space wanting to do evil things and you're an adult there stopping her from doing that evil, she might jump at the chance to travel back through time and wreck your childhood and the childhood of your ancestors so that you have less and less chance of growing up to be strong. Do you see? I nodded. I can imagine it, I said, even though it does seem impossible. Blizzard frowned. Sadly, it's not impossible, he said. When the time virus attacks someone, it targets everyone and everything around that person. Their parents, their grandparents and their great-grandparents. That way, the suffering and sadness of all those relatives comes down the family line. Our grandparents were okay, I said, but their parents had really sad lives and their parents before them. We don't know how the time virus attacks the link between your family and the time game, but it's something to do with the maze inside the game, said Blizzard. It breaks down the walls and things go all wonky. We think we've secured everything for the Walker family and once we put you together again, we hope your family will be safe. For now, growled Magal. For a very long time, said Blizzard firmly. Frank shook his head, looking confused. But the time virus still caused the death of Ben and Sky's parents. Isla boasted to me that she could have left me in a permanent coma, said Sky. She's so cruel. Angel shook her head. The time virus is vicious, said Angel, and so are those who work with it. Their aim is to cause as much suffering as they can. They like to hurt a person and then make sure that the damage is played over and over again inside that person's mind. The more anger and hatred the person feels, said Blizzard, the more harm the virus is able to cause. Magal made an angry sound in his throat. Oh, we need to stop the blasted time virus, he roared. He looked so upset that Ben started to laugh. I'm sorry, he said. You just exploded and it looked funny. Magal smiled at him. You're okay, son, he said. I'm just an angry old angel. Ben looked confused. But I thought you were related to the living creatures. Magal snorted. Who told you that, he asked. I'm nothing. I'm only half an angel and a hopeless one at that but I'm tired of all this trying to stop evil. I want to see it stopped once and for all. Angel stood up. Stop it, we shall, she said. Good, said Magal. Good. I wondered why Magal had calmed down so quickly, but then I realised that he'd begun to silently weep. The sight of him crying made me start to cry as well. I couldn't help it. Angel moved across to Magal and put her arms around him. He kept his head down, clearly embarrassed. Six swooped over to me and put her wings around my shoulders. Thank you, I whispered. Magal is right to be angry, said Angel. One day he will tell you his story and you'll understand. But for now, please know that sometimes a person can become locked inside a single tragic moment while it's replayed over and over in an endless loop. It's as if time is standing still. I felt that things were starting to make sense. That happens to me, I said. Sometimes I'm right back in the car with Dad, just before the train hit us, and the accident happens all over again inside my mind. Me too, said Ben, his eyes full of sadness. I whispered. I can still feel filthy ripping my wings out. Everyone looked down. The worst thing is that I feel ashamed that it happened to me, but I didn't even cause it. 
I'm sorry, but I'm with Magal, said Frank, his blue-green eyes flashing. I want to kill them. That's what evil wants, said Angel, for us to have hearts oozing hatred like Isla's monster of a heart. Frank shook his head. It's so wrong. It's a disgrace, said Magal. Frank frowned. Would we be able to hear your story, he asked. Magal roared with laughter. Ha! My story, he said, as if anyone wants to hear my story. Frank looked worried. I do, he said. Well, I'd hardly call it a story, said Magal, more like a tragedy. We all looked down. Magal was clearly upset. You wonder why I want to murder the time virus and anyone who has anything to do with it, especially Isla and her filthy fake overlord of a husband. Magal shook his head and spat on the floor. The time virus has a special skill, he said. It makes us hate ourselves and everyone around us. Magal was fuming. Even if it did hurt my own heart, I wouldn't mind killing some of the evil crew who ripped out young Sky's wings, he said, starting with Filbert, the utter disgrace thief. Enough, said Angel. The time virus is the scum of the universe, said Magal, thumping his fist. I say we kill the thieves. The room darkened and Angel stood up. As she did, a huge spear of light materialised in her hand and she held it up high.